Blueberry conducts physician-led support groups, helping people live healthier, happier lives, free from metabolic disease. And on our podcast, Blueberry with Dr. Lori Martis, we bring to you nutrition and lifestyle medicine experts and extraordinary guests to empower and inspire you with the knowledge and stories of plant-based lifestyle so that you can be your healthiest self. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dr. Lori Marvis, and today I'm very excited to welcome Meg Gray to the podcast. How are you today? Great. How are you? Good. So you have a a really cool story, and so I'd like to get kind of start back to the beginning of when your health issues kind of started, and we'll bring the audience into where you are now, but can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of some early on health crisis that you had to deal with? Sure. Yeah. So my whole health journey and health experience sort of started when back when I was 20 years old and I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and it was very shocking. Everyone was super surprised. I was a university student still living at home with my parents. And so I had to deal with that and I went through conventional treatment. I had no idea that lifestyle or diet played a role at all. Um, I just thought it was down to genetics and um, yeah, so I went through conventional treatment. I had a couple of surgeries, went through chemotherapy and um, gained a lot of weight along the way in the process um, with treatment and people are really sweet and they bring you treats when you're sick Mm -hmm. and which is lovely, um, but also, you know, not ideal. And so I sort of packed on the pounds uh, from there and kind of yo-yo dieted up and down. And um, from that point, I dealt with other chronic health conditions. I had asthma, endometriosis, and I dealt with chronic pain and fatigue. And the pain and fatigue just went undiagnosed. And uh, I was taking a lot of medications and things. Um, And it would sort of flare flare up and go away. And so it was sort of um, hard for doctors to sort of wrap their brains around what was really going on with me. Um, Can so you tell me a little bit about just, sorry, just to mm-hmm. kind of clarify, because you kind of just, well, I went through cancer conventional treatment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hold up a second. First of all, <laughs> the word cancer strikes fear. And even people who have lived a full life, you're 20 yes. years I was old 20. and a female ovarian cancer. So let's just back up mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah. How was your childhood growing up? Did you have these asthma and endometriosis issues before you hit age 20 or like what was going on in that time frame? Uh, no, as a kid, I was fairly, fairly average, fairly healthy, mm. um, you know, nothing major. And then it was sort of the cancer di- diagnosis at 20 and going through that experience. And then after the fact, being diagnosed with asthma as an adult and endometriosis and other issues. How was the ovarian cancer found? Like what was going on? Yeah. So it's interesting. My family doctor was just doing sort of a routine physical pap, all that kind of stuff. And she said, Hmm, I think there's something, I feel something, there's something off. I'd like you to go for an ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And so I went, had an ultrasound done and they said, Oh, you know, it's this specific type of cyst, put it in your five-year plan no big deal. You know, I was in university at the time and they just said, you know, you can have it dealt with, you know, during the summer or sometime when it's more convenient for you. And uh, then a couple months later, I was having a lot of pain and Mm -hmm. was having problems uh, going to the bathroom, peeing and things like that. And so I had to have emergency surgery to have the cyst removed. And then when they did the biopsy, they found cancer cells So I had to go and have a second surgery and have chemotherapy. Gotcha. So they just removed that one ovary because you went on to have a baby. Yeah. Okay. So, and then they were conservative with that. Okay. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Sure. So can you walk us through what's going in a 20 year old's mind with the diagnosis of cancer? I mean, that I can't even fathom what that must be like. It was really, really scary. I had watched my dad go through um, cancer as well. He's also a cancer survivor. He went through uh, colon cancer. So I had watched him go through that. And he also always went through it with um, such humor. And, um, you know, he he's such a trooper. And so I just kind of took inspiration from him to sort of you know, try not to be a total mess, <laughs> try to, um, you know, 
look on the bright side as much as I could try to stay positive and just get through it as gracefully as possible. And my mom was also an amazing support and my boyfriend at the time, who is now my husband, uh, we were together. And so, um, that was great as well. And, uh, yeah, I just, I sort of had to put my life on hold to deal with that. And then after the fact, I just wanted to sort of brush it under the rug, forget it ever happened and just move on with life and carry mm. on. Wow. Okay. So was there any family history of breast or ovarian cancer? I mean, or is this like, wow, way out of left field? Yeah, I've had relatives with uh, breast cancer, um, but no one who had dealt with it at that age, you know, mm. that young or anything like that. And um, genetically, you didn't have any of the genetic risk factors for such a young age? Not that I know of, no. Wow. And are you having to go under any surveillance at this point, uh, continued surveillance, or they consider you fully in remission or like, what is your life now from the standpoint of the cancer? Yeah, they, I've been considered cancer free. Um, so I don't need to have those follow-ups anymore for a while there, they were following me very closely every, you know, six months. And then gradually it was, you know, once, a year, once every two, three, you know, and sort of they, the time uh, grows as you distance yourself from it. And now it's been 16 years. So wow. um, yeah, I'm healthy and doing well now. Great. Well, that's fantastic. So we're, yeah. that, that's so wonderful to hear. And then, mm-hmm. all right, so you go through and then you... <laughs> brush it under the rug or get back <laughs> yeah. into your life, right? You re-engage back in like, like a little hiatus and here we go. So yeah. what was your, did anything change as far as, you know, I'm always curious how the, how your mindset changes. Was your life a little bit differently? Did you look at life a little differently? Like tell me a little bit, how, how did you yeah. change internally? Yeah, I think it definitely changes your perspective when you're, you brush up to something like that and your life is threatened essentially. And so, yeah, it definitely changes your perspective. I think being so young, I just took it as um, something to just forget about and just sort of close that chapter and then forget that that chapter happened and just move on. And over time, I've sort of had to look back at that and consider, okay, this is part of my history. It's always going to be with me and it's okay. And for a long time, I didn't want to talk about it. I just wanted to pretend like it never happened. I didn't want people to look at me differently or anything like that. Um, and now I'm super open about it and it's, it's good to share. And I think a problem Mm -hmm. shared is a problem halved and, um, it's nice to, uh, relate to other people and let other people know that they're not alone. That's awesome. So then tell us where in your journey you decided, you know, what happens to Meg and your husband's name? Chris. Chris. And like, what was that journey? And then baby and plant-based and all that work. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So I um, was graduating from university and got married in the same year, which was pretty wild, but a lot of fun. (laughs) It was busy, but great. And then um, we enjoyed married life, just the two of us for quite a while. And then uh, we had our son Riordan and he was part of the impetus and kind of the decision in going plant-based. Um, Back in 2016, he was a newborn. So as a new mom, he was only four months old and I had been cancer free for a decade. And I was sitting there with this four month old, what am I gonna feed him? And also, oh, I've been cancer free for a decade. This is amazing, but I'm not really thriving. I'm not feeling amazing. And so with those two things in my head, it's, I was thinking, okay, how are we going to feed him? How are we going to um, model positive behaviors for him? And how, how are we going to be having longevity and having energy to, you know, take care of this little one? Um, So I started doing some research, doing some digging. I watched Forks Over Knives and other documentaries. Um, I got into reading the China study and how not to die by Dr. Michael Greger had come out right around that time. And I made the decision overnight to go vegan and to give it a go. 
And I had the discussion with Chris and I said, you know, I think this is the best way for me to go. I really want to try it. I know it sounds really weird and it's completely mm -hmm. foreign to anything that we've done or anything, you know, it's not, not something I ever would have considered in the past or thought that I would ever do. Um, but I made the case that we feed Riordan this way because it was the most healthful and it looked like the science was showing that this was the best way forward for him and for our family. And so Chris wasn't fully on board in the beginning, but he did agree that we would feed our son this way, which I was really thankful that we could come to that agreement. And uh, he did come eventually come around maybe six months and he made the transition as well. That's good. Yeah. So many people don't have the buy-in from uh, their yeah. spouse or you know, others in the house. Yeah. There's even really interesting situations where there's literally like sabotage amongst family members. Oh, <laughs> about, that's awful. It's a, oh, the stories I could tell you. So we've been plant-based yeah. for 10 years and mm -hmm. <clears throat> my kids were teenagers at the time. And my husband, when I, I we, we went overnight in Western Colorado yeah. in a little town called rifle. And, yeah. um, what was interesting was that my husband was like, Hey, if you're still cooking, that's cool. Nice. <laughs> so, that's amazing. <laughs> I was like, we're good. And uh, yeah. this is how you stay happily married for almost 30 years. And so, <laughs> um, that that's where that now the kids are all grown in their twenties. One, geez, one's almost closing in on 30 and uh, she's a physician, all play me. So I'm very thankful. So what yeah. you're doing at this early age, holy moly, it's going to be such a beautiful thing to see him grow up without the ear infections and the stuff that the other kiddos are going to be dealing with. And uh, yeah, that's great. We've already seen that too. Like I, I had friends who had children, you know, around the same time, had babies around the same time and they would have ear infections. And it was just kind of one thing after the next with the mm. little ones and Riordan just we knock on wood, but he's been so healthy and we've been so lucky that, you mm. know, I found a plant-based diet and we've been able to sort of, uh, skip that and just not have to deal with it. <laughs> That's it. And so he's what kindergarten, first grade now? Yeah, he's in grade one. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's wonderful. And where are you located? Uh, we're in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. Ah, Canada. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I knew you were in our, like the North American time zone, but I wasn't quite sure just because, you know, it's funny because you hear people say different things and how they refer to university versus yeah. people. It's just a different college. And yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it's always interesting. Um, now, as far as lessons learned what are what were your the struggles with the plant-based diet or concerns like tell us what you've learned what you found that's been beneficial for yourself and that you found that's helpful when you share that with others yeah so much there are so many things that have shifted <laughs> in the last six years um but I think initially when I made the switch I was focused on whole food plant-based and I really I didn't delve into the process stuff I just I tried to keep it very whole food and very I was very focused on my health and once I you know lost 60 pounds relatively quickly and I was feeling bad, a little bit better I was still taking medication but I was feeling better I thought that was kind of as good as it got and I sort of loosened the reins and got into sort of the processed vegan food and the junky, you know, accidentally vegan stuff and had issues, health issues flare up again. And so I think one of the biggest lessons for me was, you know, really focusing on the whole plant foods and staying away from the oils and keeping salt and sugar low and uh, just really focusing on health and keeping it whole food plant-based mm. was one of the biggest lessons. So tell us a little bit about when you said you were still taking medication, some of the other mm -hmm. diseases and uh, elements that you were struggling with. Yeah, so I had asthma and um, after I went plant-based, I took up running, which was something that I never thought I would do in a million years and was really fun. And, uh, but I was dealing with breathing issues and, um, asthma. So, um, I was still taking, you know, puffers and sort of maintenance things for that every day. And, um, I was still dealing on and off with some, uh, chronic pain and fatigue issues. And, um, I don't think I really fully made the connection that delving into the more processed stuff was having a big impact 
but of course, looking back on it, hindsight's 2020 and it's like, oh yeah, that's definitely what was going on. And I think it's much about awareness and mindfulness. And if you're not really paying attention to what you're taking in and how that's impacting you and how you're feeling, um, then things can kind of go sideways. If you sort of lose focus and lose sight of um, what you're intaking and just what, what impact that has. Mm-hmm. So when you made that shift to more whole foods, how quickly did some of your symptoms um, go away? Yeah, so I did a, I did actually Dr. Goldner's protocol for a couple of months. I had a really bad flare up of everything all at once. And I had seen a plant-based doctor and she had said, you know, if you have a flare up, if you have an issue, maybe consider doing Dr. Goldner's protocol, which is um, sort of a raw, raw diet, really um, high nourishing, lots of veggies, lots of greens, omega-3s, lots of water. Um, and so I did that for a couple of months and then switched to whole food plant-based and I've been doing that ever since. Mm -hmm. So, um, and yeah, it happened pretty quickly, you know, within the first couple of weeks or so, I started Mm -hmm. to see shifts and changes and, um, gradually started coming off the different various medications and, um, yeah, completely medication free now and feeling great. Oh, that's fantastic. And so yeah. now also part of your journey was yoga is I know that had an element mm-hmm. of healing for you as well. Could you dive into that for us? Cause I, I think people really, you know, there's so much more to it than nutrition is obviously very, very important, but yeah. so sleep, but also the stress side of things and the yoga and your connection to your mind and body. Could you tell us a, a bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, nutrition is huge, but there are these other factors that are also really, really important. And Um, initially when I first tried yoga, I I have to confess, I actually hated it. I tried it and I was like, this is terrible. And doing Shavasana at the end and trying to be still and calm and not move. I was like, this is hell. I, I was terrible. And I, I was one of those people that would leave early, leave the class early. And I was just like, I'm done. I can't, I can't sit still. My mind is racing. I can't clear my brain or clear my mind what is this, you know? And so from that really interesting starting point, and when I first started, it was more like, I just wanted to do it for flexibility sake or for a good workout. And then eventually over time and with my chronic illnesses and not being able to move my body in the way I wanted to, because I used to be a real cardio bunny. I was a dance teacher and a fitness instructor for a while and having chronic illnesses and not being able to move your body the way you want getting into yoga and really starting to embrace it and embrace the slow, slower pace and the calm and practicing quieting the mind and practicing, you know, and not just throwing my hands up in the air and giving up, but giving it time to simmer and just, you know, allowing, allowing that to happen, allowing the the thoughts to enter my mind and leave and it's okay, right? And um, I think sometimes we have the perception that meditation or yoga should be just a perfect quiet practice where everything's zen and you're sitting cross-legged and it's just, you know, like heaven or some kind of uh, perfection. And that's often not the way that it goes. And uh, so I found a lot of comfort and a lot of um, de-stressing and a lot of, um, a lot of good came out of doing yoga. And eventually I decided that I wanted to do, wanted to take a yoga teacher training. And I did that and learned a lot about myself and about yoga, obviously. And, um, yeah, it was an amazing experience. Mm. Yeah. There's, I, I, I totally understand that whole can't be quiet. What are you talking about? (laughs) (laughs) Although in the yoga classes, I'd get so relaxed when I actually have to tell someone telling me what to do. I'm just like, oh yeah, this back part. Nice. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But the meditation part is, it is hard, that whole letting go and just letting the thoughts, you don't have to react to every single thought. It's that observation of the thoughts as an object. There was a a book called The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. Yes. That's a great one. (laughs) Yeah. Life-changing. It is. uh, (laughs) 
It is seriously so life changing. Yes. I try to get him on the podcast. He doesn't do it. I will go to Gainesville this year. I'm going down there and I want to oh. meet Mr. Singer in person it's because exciting. it is really exciting. I, I also read his book, The uh, Surrender Experiment. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, then he's got a new book coming out in May. And I am just the way he explains it. And I, I know he was his writing, like he just had this the internal conscious whatever it is you'd like to speak to just letting it flow but if you read about his life story in the surrender experiment it's like wow what a journey and uh I'm just so intrigued and I've got to read that one yeah (laughs) I read it in one day oh my Um, goodness it's 252 pages so I like I should say 24 hours I started it one night and then I finished it the next day but Mm -hmm. I was just like and so now it's like whenever um whenever there's stress or something, I'll just tell them, like, I'm surrendering. I'm letting that thought go. And it's <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> but it's just, it's such a unique and delightful way to look at stresses in your life that you don't have mm-hmm. to be stressed about the stress. And that's where I feel like people in there, those minds just go <clears throat> like that. I call yeah. them monkey mind when people are trying oh, to yeah. sleep. So tell me, how did that how did that change for you? Cause you said your mind was racing. So like, how did you see that evolve? And like, when did you become aware of like, Oh wait, that's better. What was that like? Yeah, I think it was sort of a, a slow progression, a slow transition. And, um, just the more I did it, the more I noticed, um, outside of the yoga class, outside of the studio, you know, being a little bit more calm or feeling a little mm. bit, more put together or a bit um, less reactive and just the more I did it and the more I practiced and the more I learned about it um, the more I felt that way and uh, so it's a really incredible practice. I consider it something like uh, learning a foreign language right you become more proficient that now Mm -hmm. your thoughts are literally in the language versus okay that was when how does that translate to English <laughs> you know instead yeah. of that that I would imagine it's a very similar similar experience um in the yeah. sense that it just is your natural it becomes your habit your natural course of events yeah and it's almost like any other skill right like when you're mm-hmm. changing to a plant-based diet and initially it's like how am mm-hmm. I gonna do this I don't know anything about anything I don't like eat, to eat vegetables I don't like cooking <laughs> how, what am I gonna do And, uh, so it's like anything else, it's practice, it's time, you gain some experience, you get some momentum going, and then you're off to the races. Mm, That's perfect. I love that. Cause I really feel that so many people need to really come in one, be in touch with their body and Mm. then these cravings. So a lot of patients that I work with have food cravings and they almost feel like it's, it's such a struggle and suffering to walk away from their old habits that it's just easier to maintain and deal with the chronic diseases that they've dealt with. And Mm -hmm. it's a really sad state of affairs, but that's unfortunately the kind of where we're at the bad choice is the easy choice where we live, especially in the United States. Um, Mm -hmm. As far as uh, the, the one thing that I always get asked and get comments, if I don't ask this question is, could you please tell us, Meg, what you eat in a day? Because if I don't ask, I will be dealing with some nasty comments. <laughs> oh, sure. Um, yeah. So in the mornings, I like to sometimes have a smoothie um, packed with tons of greens and some flaxseed or chia, lots of berries, maybe a frozen banana. Um, if I'm not having a smoothie, if it's you know cold and winter time, then mm-hmm. it's probably going to be oatmeal. Uh, similar setup, oatmeal with some berries, you know, some fruit and some uh, ground flax or chia in there. Um, And then for lunches, uh, usually it's a big salad or some kind of lots of veggies with um, a whole grain or a starchy vegetable along with um, chickpeas, some kind of bean of some sort. I love uh, making refried beans, oil-free just on the stovetop, beans, salsa, some spices, mash it up good to go Mm -hmm. um and then dinners uh yeah similarly similar setup to my lunches um and sometimes we'll make you know a a shepherd's pie or something like that something comforting if it's cold outside and then eating a little bit more raw in the summer just feels a little more natural to us um but yeah keeping it whole food plant-based keeping it simple 
keeping it delicious. It's the way to go. <laughs> it's uh, That's perfect. And then the next question I'm sure is that a parents are going to say, what do you feed your little people? Um, your, your son, he's young. Yeah. What was that like with him growing up like this? Did he ever, if he goes to birthday parties, like how are you dealing with all those social difficulties that can be encountered? Yeah, so it's been a little bit weird because of the pandemic. So that's kind mm. of put a pause and a, a bit of a monkey wrench into things. Um, but he is very happy being vegan and eating a plant based diet. And he knows that we're vegan. And he'll ask, you know, if he's offered something, he'll ask if it's vegan. And, um, you know, he likes vegetables. And it's just it's what he was introduced to as a little one. And he's still little. And that's what he is used to. And that's what he enjoys. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it comes to sort of birthday parties or things like that, um, we've been to a couple where friends will make something that is suitable for us, which is really sweet. Um, or we just bring food with us. We'll just ask, you know, what, what will you be serving? And then we just bring sort of a comparable item that's uh, vegan and suitable for us. And um, he's been happy with that so far, so far, so good. Uh, we'll see how things go as he gets older and maybe um, things get maybe a little bit more challenging with social situations, but we've always sort of um, explain to him that the reason why we do it and you know mommy was really sick back in the day and we want to keep everyone healthy and you know live really long lives and we always tell him you know our goal is to live to be 100 in good health and having lots of energy and he sees that you know I go to the gym and I do yoga and all these things um, so he does those things too and he eats the same things we eat and uh, yeah he really enjoys it. That's really, really good. So, mm -hmm. you know, we were always an active family. We were prior yeah. active duty. Um, my husband and I both, um, the kids were involved with sports the moment they were old enough to sign up three, yeah. four years old and, you know, just having fun. We go hikes, we've been biking, we've been all over mm -hmm. the place. Um, lots of Canadian trips, which is some of our favorite, um, you know, lots of good things like that. So the emulating the behavior that you want to see your children follow is really, really important. The other thing, two things that I just share with you as they get older, um, I allow them the space to make those decisions and other parents of younger, you know, maybe not younger than yours, but in this age group between, you know, preteens, as they get a little older, they go and they want a little more independence. Yeah. What's happened is they'll be raised vegan, but parents are like, let them make their choices. And I had done this as well. Um, so what happens though, is their body will let them know immediately. Oh. That wasn't such a great choice. I'm yeah. dead serious. And mm -hmm. it, I could tell you some, <laughs> just, <laughs> just from our own experience with my youngest ending up in the hospital after one of these oh, events. No. Well, it's all good. He suffered yeah. and he learned a lesson and <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah. but you know, another really good example is I had a, a type one diabetic patient. Um, he was four, when I first started working with the family, within six months of diagnosis, they had gone from a ketogenic diet to plant-based. And that's when I started working with them. He's six now and doing mm -hmm. very well, but his sister, who's uh, two years older than him, they mom <laughs> let her go to a party and she insisted on having, I think it was ice cream and pizza or something. And she had an upset tummy for like two, three days. And she oh. honestly, now when she goes to birthday, she's like, that ain't whole food plant-based. I'm not eating it. And so it was yeah. really a beautiful thing because it's not now there's not the resistance from the parent but the the child is understanding their own experience because they now they know what normal is in america we have a skewed sense of normal mm -hmm. people think chronic yeah. disease is normal being ill not feeling well is normal but little kids do as well because we're giving them junk food from day one but yeah. if you feed them a whole food plant-based diet then they go experience <laughs> the processed food <laughs> they'll figure it out themselves and yeah. they don't like that just like anybody else so anyway I just throw that out there for your future thinking and yeah uh, thought process but uh he's uh well on his way of just living a long healthy life which he you know his peers will be developing type 2 diabetes in their sometimes even before they're you know 10 12 years old <clears throat> mm -hmm. obesity is running rampant 20 percent of our kids are um overweight or obese now you know when yeah. I was a kid it was like you had that one in 200, mm -hmm. very different story now. So yeah, but, for sure. 
That is wonderful. What do you do for like snacks for him that he likes? Because I know that's a, one other question that people get a lot of questions. Yeah. Like, what do I snack on for kids? He loves fruit. That's probably the biggest thing that he loves. He'll just grab a banana or grab, you know, any fruit out of the fridge, apples, grapes, anything like that. Uh, we keep frozen fruit on hand. So he'll help us make smoothies or nice cream. Um, what else? Hummus. Hummus is always good with veggies. Um, yeah, those are kind of his favorite, his favorite things. Thanks. Perfect. Yeah. And we try to keep it fun for him. We try to get him involved in the kitchen and we ask him, you know, would you like this for dinner or that for dinner? And then, you know, and he goes grocery shopping with us and helps us pick out things. And so we try to really keep him involved and make it fun for him. We get really excited about our food. So then he gets really excited about his mm -hmm. food and yeah, we try to uh, keep it fun for everyone. Mm -hmm. And just how beautiful the food is. I mean, it's yeah. just, it's the, the colors alone are just mesmerizing. Like mm -hmm. every time I cut like purple cabbage, I'm just like, so cool. I know. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. So, so yeah, I'm just, <laughs> so we get so excited about things. Yeah. Um, wonderful. So Maggie, I know you have a website and mm -hmm. how can people reach you, follow you services, programs, you offer anything like that, that you like to share? Yeah, so I have my website, which is plantfitmeg.com. I have my YouTube channel, which is also plantfitmeg, everything plantfitmeg. So you can find me on Instagram as well, Facebook. I have a TikTok account too, which is kind of silly, but fun. Uh, I do offer one on one coaching. So I do help people transition into a plant based diet. Or if they're looking to lose weight on a plant-based diet, I'll help sort of guide them, meet you where you're at and just sort of help you um, figure out where to get started and um, how to get that process going. I did complete the um, certification, the certificate program through T. Colin Campbell and E. Cornell, the plant-based nutrition course. Um, and I am a healthy weight loss coach as well. So I offer that service and um, you can get in touch with me through my website uh, for that. And uh, yeah, I, I make a lot of uh, YouTube videos about um, eating a healthy diet and simple plant-based recipes and healthy weight loss tips and all these kinds of things to help other people along on uh, their journeys and also to share my experience and uh, share, you know, where I've come from and uh, ways to keep it simple and fun. Wonderful. Thank you so yeah. much. That's wonderful. And everyone will have links in the show notes with all this information. And Meg, that was great. And I loved your story. Your energy is amazing. And it's just so fun to connect with others in the space, um, you know, doing your thing and helping spread the word and just getting people healthier. So thank you. Thank you so much, Lori. It's uh, been a pleasure to have a chat with you today. And I love what you're doing with plant-based telehealth. And, um, you know, it's really inspiring to meet others who we're all on the same team, right? We're mm -hmm. all trying to bring this mes message out and get more people involved and knowing that they can change their lives and be empowered to reclaim their health and lose weight and feel great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's there's a lot of work left to do. So yes, everyone absolutely. <laughs> so there's plenty of, there's plenty of work to do. So if you're interested, yeah. you know, reach out and, uh, I'm excited to see where you grow and, and continue good health with you and your family. And, uh, thanks again. Thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed that video before you go though, please hit the subscribe button and the alert button. So you'll be notified whenever we release any new videos. We upload a new episode of Blueberry with Dr. Lori Marvis on Friday. Now, if you'd rather listen to the podcast, you can find us on all the major platforms such as iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and even Spotify. If you're looking for amazing resources to help you start a plant-based diet, sustain a plant-based diet, exercise, recipes, or anything wellness, we got you covered there too. Because at Blueberry, we actually provide physician-led support groups to help people live happier, healthier lives and free from metabolic disease. Don't forget to check out our website at blueberry.health. And thanks again for watching.